Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Chemistry Essentials, video 36. It's on the rate law. Now, in the last video, we talked about reactions and how the speed of reactions can vary. And so if we look at this reaction right here, the breakdown of ammonia into hydrogen and nitrogen gas, it's going to proceed along a straight line. In other words, if we have a high concentration of ammonia or a low concentration of ammonia, the amount that's being consumed is going to remain consistent. In other words, the rate of this reaction is the same. But if we look at something like this, nitrogen dioxide, and we look at its rate as it's broken down into nitric oxide and oxygen, it's going to follow a different curve. In other words, when there's a lot of nitrogen dioxide, it's going to proceed really, really quickly. And then when there's not much, it's not going to proceed as quickly. And if we look at those two equations, they almost look identical. And so there's no way to tell just looking at a balanced equation of a reaction how fast it's going to proceed. And that's an important thing to understand as we move forward with the rate law. And so the rate law really refers to the amount of reactants that are being consumed. And so we don't have to concern ourselves with what products are being made. And here's the equation for the rate law. And so if we break it down, rate, the speed of the reaction, is equal to K. K is going to be the rate constant. We'll talk about that in the next video. And that's going to be times the concentration of the reactant, how much A we have, raised to the m power. And that power is going to tell us the reaction order. Now, the three ones I'll talk about are zero, first, and second order uh, reactions. And so what does that mean if we have a zeroth order? It means that we're putting a zero right here. In other words, it's the concentration of A raised to the zero power. In a first, we're going to put a one there. And in a second order, we're going to put a two there. And so what does a zeroth order look like? Well, if you raise anything to the zero power, it's simply one. And so you can think of this turning into a one, and so rate is equal to k. In other words, rate is going to be equal to that constant, or the rate constant. If we look at a first order reaction, then this is raised to the one power, and so it's going to be the rate constant times the concentration of a. So what are we going to get? We're going to get this curve where it's going really, really quickly at the beginning and then slower as we get more. And then if it's raised to the second power, it's going to be a second order. So it's going to be K times the concentration of A raised to the second power. And you can see that that reaction is actually going to go faster uh, the more we have. And so we'll go through each of those and I'll give you examples of them as well. Now the thing that you have to remember is that we have to determine these experimentally. We can't just look at the equation and figure out the rate law for that reaction. What if we have more than one reactant, then the rate law is still going to apply. And so it's going to be simply this. Rate is equal to K, the rate constant, times the concentration of A raised to the m power and B raised to the n power. And so each of these can proceed along a different reaction order. And, and so if we want to figure out the overall order, we're simply going to add those values up. And so I'll show you how we can use data to figure out what um, order it's going to be uh, uh, after we've calculated the data. And so in a zeroth order reaction, here's an example I gave you at the beginning. We're breaking down ammonia into hydrogen gas and uh, nitrogen gas. And so rate is equal to K. In other words, it doesn't matter how much ammonia we have, it's still going to proceed at the same rate. Now if we were to look at the data, it would look like this. Imagine three experiments where we vary the concentration of A, we would find that the rate is going to be identical. And so if you, always, if you have a rate that stays the same, if you're looking at simply data, you know that's a zero order. How could we figure that ba out based on this graph? Well, to figure out the rate, all you do is figure out the slope of that line. And so if we figure the slope of the line here, and then tangent here, we would find that those triangles are exactly the same. And so if we were to graph the rate over time uh, relationship, we'd find it's simply going to be a straight line. It stays the same. If we look at a first order reaction, this is the breakdown of hydrogen peroxide. Remember, rate is equal to K, that constant times the concentration of A. And so this is what our graph is going to look like. If we look at a, a couple of experiments where we have varying, again, the concentration of A, what we'll find is that there's a direct relationship between these two. As we double the concentration, we're doubling the rate. And you can see here that we're doubling the concentration, we're doubling the rate as well. So a great example of a first order is radioactive decay. Now, if we were to calculate the slope, we're going to have a steep slope at the beginning and a not so steep slope as we move farther out. So if I were actually to graph the rate over time, it's going to be a straight line, but it's going to be a straight line that's descending over time. Now another way to figure this out is simply to take the data and then take the natural log of the concentration and we're also going to get a straight line. What's cool about that is the slope of that line is going to tell us K or that constant. If we look at a second order reaction it's going to go even faster. So rate is the concentration
concentration raised to the second power. And so if we were to look at a graph, what does that look like? Well, in this first experiment from point 0.1 to point 0.2, you'll see that it looks like it's doubling. And so don't be tricked by that. What we're really doing is squaring it. So 2 squared is 4. 4 squared now is 16. So if we double it again from point 0.2 to point 0.4, we see that we're squaring that rate. And so what would that look like if we were to graph it? You actually get a curved line of the rate. And so you're taking the slope of a curved line, getting another curved line. What does that imply? That it's going really, really fast, the faster we have that rate. And so that doesn't, how do we find a slope of this curved line without using a lot of calculus? It doesn't write work. And so what we'll do is if we take um, over time, the inverse of the concentration of that will actually get a straight line, which related to K. Now let's say we're looking at overall reaction order. Like I'd said, if we had more than one reactant, each of those may proceed along a different order. And so let's look at this data. This is a real common question in AP Chem. So if we look at the concentration of A, you can see right here it's held steady. And since, since we're holding it steady, we can just look at B and see what's happening to B. Well, you can see that we're increasing the concentration of B, but the rate is not changing. And so I know that B is going to proceed along a zero order reaction. Now let's see where we're keeping B the same. So B is the same here and here. And so if we look then at A from here to here, A, we're doubling the concentration uh, in experiment one to experiment three. Let's look at what's happening to the rate. The rate is proceeding as a square. And so rate is equal to K times A raised to the two power. So that's a second order. B is a zero order reaction. Since this is essentially one, this would be our overall order. And so all we're doing is simply adding those reaction orders and getting the overall reaction order. Now let me give you a problem. Say this is the problem you have to figure out. Could you figure out the overall reaction order? Pause the video. Give it a try, and then you could put your answer down below in the video description. Um, we, let's say we gather a bunch of data, and we don't want to look at specific points. We want to actually calculate which order it is really, really quickly. A super simple way to do that is let's say this is the concentration of our reactants. What we could do is simply graph the concentration versus time. In other words, this would be on the x-axis, this would be on the y. We could then graph the natural log of the concentration versus time. And then we could do the inverse of the concentration versus time. Now it's really easy to calculate this using a spreadsheet. We graph them, whichever one gives us a straight line, that's gonna tell us what order it is, either a zero, a first, or a second. An example of that in the chemistry lab, you could do the breakdown of crystal violet. Crystal violet is gonna be purple, but when we mix it with hydroxide, Side, it's going to make a clear form of a chemical. And so what we could use is use a spectrophotometer. Spectrophotometer measures the amount of absorbance. In other words, how much of that light is being absorbed by the material. And we could simply graph it. We could graph the absorbance versus time, then the natural log of the absorbance versus time, and then the inverse of absorbance versus time. And what that absorbance is really telling is, is how much of that crystal violet is here. The more that's there, the more it's being absorbed. And so we could figure out which of these lines is going to be a straight line, and that's going to actually tell us K. And so did you learn to analyze concentration versus time data to figure out is this a zero, first, or second order? Now we can go much higher than that. We can have fractional orders, but we're just getting started on rate law, and I hope that was helpful.